Remember to send us your questions for tonight's overtime so we can answer them after the show on YouTube. All right, Bill. Can I call you Bill? Does this, uh, does this count as a comment? All right, I'm going to continue with that discussion. It was the uh, first day of spring this week, and we had a horrible terrorist attack. I thought of the Arab Spring. That's gross and racist, like saying shifty Jew. Sorry, it's, it's just an instinct now. And I read this article in the uh, Wall Street Journal. Sahab Amari is the editor of a book called Arab Spring Dreams. And he says, today the Middle East is less stable and less hopeful than it was before the Arab Spring. Well, that's clearly because of white imperialism and colonialism, Bill. Come on, get with the program, man. He mentions Egypt, Yemen, Libya, Syria, places that had Arab Spring uprisings. We were all very hopeful at the time. I think the word you're searching for is naive. He said, at the height of the movement, I edited an anthology of essays by young Middle East dissidents. They described an Arab world where women and men were equal. No problem there. Blasphemous cartoonists were tolerated. Oh, okay, the word tolerated makes me a little uncomfortable, but I suppose it's the first step in a long journey. And gay people could, be, could live openly. He asks how those dreams turned into nightmares, and so I would ask that to you. Well, Bill, I'll tell you, from the perspective of most on this panel, the answer is going to be, it has many, many, many aspects to it, but absolutely none of them have anything to do with Islam. But I'm not here for you, Bill. I actually genuinely like you, and I'm not here for Ian Bremmer, who actually seems to have a good head on his shoulders. I'm not even here for the alternative jank Uger in the center. I'm not here for any of them instead. I'm here for yet another pink volcano. Uh, Bill, do you give these women these jackets just as a warning sign to people like me? Is it like, uh-oh, if she's wearing a pink jacket, no, there's incoming stupid. It's a lot more complicated than religion. And if you limit it well, to religion, I'm, you're missing the fact that I'm religion not. can partly be the antidote as well as the problem. Sorry, sir. As much as I'm not here for you, I couldn't let that stupid statement pass without exposing it to the world. I'm not okay. limiting it to religion. I, I think there are other factors. It's other people who don't want to put religion in the stew. And, and it's a I, major factor. And I agree with you. You've got to talk about it frankly. It's definitely in the mix. ISIS has a thousand names, but all of them have Islamic in them. Well, Bill, you said the I word, so we all know what time it is. It's pink volcano eruption time. Yeah, so, no so ISIS is a narrow and far extreme sect of the wide band of m the Muslim religion, the Islamic religion. Uh, yes, that wide, glorious band of a rainbow that regularly attacks each other over their religious beliefs. Yes, it's, it's a wide band. To, and this is, gets back probably to your previous conversation and the point that you've been making a lot, I think, on this show is why not say Islamic terrorism? It appears that he's made you uncomfortable by saying it so many times on this show, which frankly makes me laugh. However, we've got a huge number of moderate Muslims, not just in this country, but elsewhere. A huge number of less than 1% of the population. It's huge. Who don't like that term. And True. words matter. I agree. Words matter a great deal. Does anyone know the word kufar? Are you familiar with that word? Because I think that word matters too. Or, or takfir. Are you familiar with the word takfir? Would you, would you like to discuss what that word means and the behavior it entails? No, of course not. And so well, why not call it, if we want to ally ourselves with the moderate Muslims, why not use the language they're suggesting we use, which is jihadism? Why, in the United States of America, do we not currently use the word Negro? Why did we use African American for a very long time? And why are they now insisting we not use the word African American and just use the word black or people of color, depending on which crowds you're running with. Why? Oh, because, because offended people are never satisfied. Imagine that. I say that because literally days ago I was corrected from using the phrase jihadi because it implies 
Islamic. You dumb bitch. And not broad brush an entire think, religion. Think, think of what you not broad brush an entire well, religion with a term they don't want. Now this is why I give Bill Maher so much credit, because he's actually about to go on to say exactly what I have said in previous videos. Why exactly do we have to be so sensitive about this? If they're going to commit terrorist acts because of some words or some cartoons, why should we change? That's what they want. And frankly, if me saying a mean word is enough to make you blow yourself up, Pull the fucking cord. Think of what you're saying. You're saying that somehow these folks are so combustible that if we use the wrong word, we're going to nudge them over but into strapping if, on a suicide if you are, vest? If you... Bravo, Bill, really. No, I mean, if you... Now, what does that say group, about the culture? No, no, well, what does it say about, about us that we refuse to listen to with the terms that they would like to be referred I by? Was... What? Let's view this rationally and mathematically, if you will. One culture is saying, I'm going to call you Islamic terrorism because you are terrorism inspired by the religious ideals of Islam. The other culture says, if you do that, I feel like it's my right to kill you. These are not equal, you dumb bent. Why, I, I, why I, would I'm we... not an official. I've never been an official. I'm not running for anything. And I'm certainly willing to say that Islamic terrorism is a problem and a unique problem, and there are aspects of the religion that make it a unique problem. We're going to say that. I'm going to stop you on a high note before either you embarrass yourself or I blow a blood vessel. He just goes on to basically say that Obama does it for political reasons, and of course, she has an answer for that. He also recognizes, though, he recognizes that words matter. If the words Islamic terrorism offend you because you're a Muslim, that's an internal issue you probably need to work out amongst yourselves. And that insulting a whole swath of people that come from 50 different countries and represent a billion and a half but, people well, well, is not a great idea when it's one small slice. Uh, ma'am, you should, you should perhaps read the room when both Bill Maher and the gentleman who was previously on your side are telling you that you're wrong. Perhaps you're wrong. Bill takes a moment to correct this woman and then explains some of the more brutal aspects of Islam and the brown gentleman in the center decides to play apologetics quite poorly. Frankly speaking, it's almost akin to an internet meme I'm going to bring up afterwards. When you focus on this, then you actually create the sea I'm talking about, in which a small minority of people who are violent swim in the sea of people who feel marginalized and disaffected. And what you want to they do make, is shrink the sea. They make it larger. Okay. Right. You know and the shrill cano erupts again. Go on, dear. Let's explain your motivation to the room. Your real motivation. I mean, I, as the former governor of Michigan, we have the largest Arab American population outside sure, of the Middle East, right? Dearborn is 40% Arab American. So luckily, your defensiveness has absolutely nothing to do with just playing politics or anything, right? If you bring it home, Voted and the Bernie. people, and they did, they did overwhelmingly. The people who are living here, who are living in the U.S., who need to be our allies in this as well, are offended by this broad brush. Then, my dear lady, my dear, dear sweet woman, they are not our allies. Do you understand now? If that's how they feel, they are shit allies, and I would prefer to operate without them. And in, in Dearborn, people are completely... These are facts. They're not... No, no what brushing. I'm, what I'm telling you, though, the is... What you're telling us, frankly and openly, and without realizing it, without even using your words, you're telling us the facts don't matter. What matters is, these people who make up a percentage of your voting constituent are butthurt because we use the words Islamic terrorism to describe Islamic terrorism. Get over it. Their feelings are irrelevant to the situation. Islamic terrorists are committing Islamic terrorism in the name of Islam. Get used to it. If people, if people are offended that we are using 
Islamic terrorism to suggest that all of Islam believes or acts in that I, I way. <laughs> that was an incoming not all. That's the I think problem. they should and be and more offended by the incompetence of their all. leaders than they should be by the fact that the U.S. says Islam or not. I really do. Well, we I, can't bomb these guys into submission. Can I, can but I ask a different question, though, issue. about this It is issue. not the only issue, but if yes. you alienate people who we need to be our allies, then we end no, up actually, endangering the United to... States. Well, at least you have the courage to directly say it. If we piss off these supposedly moderate Muslims of Dearborn, Michigan, they might start blowing shit up. Is that what you're saying? Because that's certainly what you're fucking implying. This would get them more on our side. Uh, you know, we don't want to alienate the people who believe in our values. We seem to be always right. getting out of our way to defend the people who don't believe in our values, like the Saudis. <laughs> yeah, I know, the Saudis. Someone in particular is really going to like that joke. Beyond that, why would you argue for people that are essentially saying there should be blasphemy laws? You know that's what we're leading towards, right? If you start letting a group say, I'm offended by that because of religious reasons, that's called blasphemy law. That's really all I wanted to share of this woman right here, and I wanted to apologize to some of my Canadian viewers who may have been offended at my last episode of The Pink Volcano. This proves it. These people are everywhere. These people willing to enact pseudo-religious law onto the books of Western nations for the sake of defending Western liberalism exist, and they need to be called out and mocked. That said, the very end of this episode had an interesting moment I'd like to share with everyone. Let's talk, and with the panel, about uh, the liberal bubble, because I know yeah. you're not afraid to go there, and I'm always criticizing what goes on on college campuses. There was a doozy this week at Emory University. Oh yeah, guys, this one might actually be the height of sensitivity. I mean, I may think it's silly, but, you know, people being offended at someone carving Hitler did nothing wrong into a desk or making a swastika out of tape, that's sensitive, but this gets worse, trust me. Oh my gosh. You know what happened at Emory? Talk to I, I, can, I, can, I, I can't almost say it. Uh, somebody wrote Trump, pro-Trump messages on the sidewalk in chalk. Of course, this behavior on a modern American college campus would be considered, I don't know, the equivalent of lynching black men or something. Uh, one student said, I legitimately feared for my life. I thought we were having a KK... I thought we were having a KK rally KK on campus. What were the uh, messages? Uh, yeah. Just Trump. Like Trump just in 20 Just the word? In chalk. Oh, my God. Uh, she even thinks that's absurd. But wait, let me cut forward just a few minutes to her reaction to the actual story. You see, we were almost to the point in this discussion of actually being able to make some headway when this happened. And now you're seeing the effects, and what's going to be scary is as people go out into the world and they discover that it can't be cosseted in those ways, they're going to encounter dangerous ideas that are very different from their own. And They don't I'm... seem to get that concept at all. Everything seems to take a back seat to their feelings. Careful, Bill. You're disparaging obsessing with your own emotional reactions to things. You're going to trigger the volcano again. I think I feel the rumbling. And their sensitivity. Uh, democracy, they don't give a shit about. Free speech doesn't matter. It's all about, oh my gosh. But I'm how much do we have to worry about it? Because it's not going to last. It's not going to, you know, survive contact with reality. See? Look at that face. She can barely contain herself. Right. Once you're kind of in the world, that's no, but seriously, it's just, oh, it's just so, so, so true. true. There now. So true. I mean, really, that's a great. You are the... painting them with a broad brush, too, Bill. I'm, I'm just again, sorry. I'm just reading the. Facts. I know one story, but you can't sit oh, there all oh, like this. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a real human being who is so obsessed with virtue signaling that they are not part of the I don't know, against PC culture that they're willing to say that there's not currently an issue in universities in America, which there very fucking clearly is. But she can't say that because it would go against her position politically. It's disgusting. 
As stated before, consider this video my formal apology to any Canadian viewers that thought that my attack on the previous pink volcano was an attack on your institutions. This cancer is everywhere, especially in the Western world. And I'd like to thank Bill Maher here for making this person public and also dressing her in that silly pink jacket again so I could spot her from about two and a half miles away. Thanks everyone for joining me today. I hope you've all had fun. Feel free to join me on my podcast with old Reese this Thursday. Should be fun too. And now I'm off to do anything within my power to forget that people like this exist on the same plane of reality as I do. Goodbye and good luck out there.